It's the precision of language. Do we understand the words that we speak and the meaning behind those words? You know, so I wanted to look up what is, what is an actual resolution? It's actually not the same thing as a goal. A goal is a target, a goal is an aim. It's something that we're working towards accomplishing. A resolution defined by Webster is a firm decision to do or not to do something. What is going on, everybody, guys? Welcome to 2023, and welcome to episode 160 of The Superman Life. As always, guys, I am your host, Frank Rich, and we are so incredibly grateful and thankful to have you here with us today, guys. We have a very special episode to kick off 2023. First off, just want to wish everybody a happy new year, a merry Christmas, happy holidays. Hopefully, you guys had the opportunity to disconnect from work, from stress, and connect with the people that you care about most, the people that care about you the most. And hopefully we are fired up to make 2023 the best year ever. Guys, I'm gonna bring a solo episode here uh, for you today. And my goal here is to give you some insight into why maybe in the past, maybe some of the goals, maybe some of the resolutions, maybe some of what you've set out to accomplish year over year has failed. Because when you look at the statistics of New Year's resolutions, the vast majority of people that had even set them not only fail, but they fail oftentimes within the first couple of weeks or within the first few months. So that's what we're going to be diving deep into today is why do 90% of resolutions fail and what do we need to do in order to keep our promises, keep our goals, and keep those decisions that we make for ourselves at the beginning of the year all the way through completion, all the way through the end of the year. First off, guys, just a couple housekeeping notes here on the podcast. Obviously, you're here at the Superman Life. If you're new here, welcome, guys. This is episode 160. We've been at this for over three and a half years now. We're so incredibly grateful and excited about where we're going to be going moving forward into 2023. So those of you who have been with us for a while know that this has been a weekly show. Since the beginning, we've released one episode every single Monday now for the last 160 weeks. Decision that we made uh, towards the end of 2022 was to double our output. So here, as we kick off 2023, guys, we're going to be going to two episodes every single week, both on the audio and on the video side, if you're here with us watching on YouTube. So we will continue to drop our episode every single Monday at 7 a.m. And then on Thursday, we're going to have the second episode of the week. And most of our episodes, guys, are going to be just what they've been in the past, right? We're going to bring on experts, guests, entrepreneurs, world changers from all across the globe to share with you their stories, to share with you what has unlocked in their life and how they've been able to transcend and overcome whatever struggle they've gone through to go out and create their own Superman life. So we're going to double down on the content here, guys, and we're so excited. So if you're getting value out of these shows, uh, guys, take a minute here and pause this episode and go leave us a five-star rating or written review because that is the catalyst for the success. That is the catalyst for the growth that we've been experiencing, guys. When you take the minute or the few seconds that it takes to let Apple, let Spotify, let YouTube know that these val- uh, that these conversations are valuable, that tells them that they need to get this in front of more people. Now, here's a couple interesting statistics, guys. We saw a 125% increase last year in 2022 over the previous two years, meaning we had 125% more downloads for the show on the audio side just in 2022 that we had had in the previous two and a half years. So we started in 20. 20- 19. So 2019, 2020, and 2021, we did 125% more downloads just last year than we had in the two and a half years leading up to that. Now on the YouTube side, we saw over half a million views on our channels and we doubled our subscriber count just last year, guys. So I want to take a minute here and just express to you how incredibly grateful and thankful I am to have every single one of you guys. Like I said, if you've been with us since the beginning, thank you. If you're new here, wherever you came from, we're, we're excited and we're grateful to have you part of our community here. But I want to dive deep into why 90% of resolutions fail. You know, I was doing some research in preparation for today's conversation. And a couple things really stood out to me in some of the numbers that I was able to come across. First off, did you guys know that only 38% of people, 38.5% of people actually set New Year's resolutions? It's fascinating to me that over half the people Half of the adults in the world right now start 20, start the new year 
without any clear definable goals, without any specific targets that they're working towards. And when you think about the people in your life and why they don't make progress year over year and why many people often seem to be in the same place year over year. I saw this when I was working in the gym. So in the late, uh, before 2010, so 2008, 2009, 2010, I, I, I helped manage a few gyms here in the Tampa Bay area. And one thing was interesting is we would see people come into the gym year over year. We'd see them come in four or five times a week. Yet after six months, after a year, after 18 months, nothing about them changed. They didn't, they didn't build more muscle. They didn't lose more weight. Yet they were there day after day after day. And I think that is a byproduct of so few people having a name or having a target or having a specific goal that they're working towards. So it's an interesting statistic there, right? 38.5% of the people or only 38.5% of people actually set New Year's resolutions. Now to those that do, only 9% actually keep and succeed in hitting their New Year's resolutions. 9%. So that's where that number over 90% of New Year's uh, resolutions fail. Drastic, guys. What a depressing number that is nine, only 9% nine succeed. And maybe that is a reason why so few people set them because they believe even going into this that they're doomed for failure, that they're not going to succeed. Now here's even more shocking statistics. 23% of people that set a New Year's resolutions quit within the first week. Almost a quarter of the people that set a New Year's resolutions, a goal for 52 weeks, a goal for 365 days, fail within the first seven. It's an alarming statistic, right? And think about the think about other areas of that life. If we can't keep a promise that we made for an entire year for at least a week, how is that going to show up in other areas of our lives? And those that make it past the first week, 43% of the people that set New Year's resolutions fail by the month of February. Once again, alarming and shocking statistics. But why is it? Why is it that only 38% of people set them? But why is it, more importantly, that only 9% actually keep it and succeed? And I think the first thing I wanted to, to get to here is, you know, I'm big on, on precision of language. This is something that I've really picked up from my business partner, Larry Yach, who we've had on the show now three times. We have our mastermind group, uh, Becoming Superhuman, that he is, you know, the, the education director within our mastermind. It's the precision of language. Do we understand the words that we speak and the meaning behind those words? You know, so I wanted to look up what is, what is an actual resolution? It's actually not the same thing as a goal. A goal is a target. A goal is an aim. It's something that we're working towards accomplishing. A resolution defined by Webster is a firm decision to do or not to do something. So when we talk about keeping the promises that we make to ourselves, when we make a resolution, that is the decision and the commitment to do something. So when you fail within the first week, there you go. Once again, not keeping those promises that you make to yourself. When 43% of the people fail by February, once again, it comes back to not keeping the decisions, not keeping the promises that we make to ourselves. But I think it goes a layer deeper, right, as to why so many people fail. Now, we could talk about how to succeed in hitting your, your resolutions, how to succeed in hitting your goals. We've done 159 episodes across the board on all the strategies, the tactics, right? You know you need a community. Do you have the supportive group and accountability and the coaching needed to get you there? Are you taking your bigger long-term goals and breaking them down into micro goals? Which means if you have a year-long goal to accomplish something, has it been broken down into quarterly goals? Has that been broken down into monthly goals? Had the monthly goals been broken down into weekly goals and the weekly goals been, been broken down into daily goals? But I don't think that's why people fail because I think most people understand that in order to achieve something big, you need to break it down into smaller, actionable items. I think the vast majority of people fail because they're looking at the resolution through the wrong lens. They're looking at it with the wrong perspective. A resolution is not a goal and it shouldn't be looked at as a goal. Yes, I think we need to set goals every single year. Maybe some of us want to lose weight this year. Maybe some of us have a financial goal to make this our first six-figure year. So we make the goal to make six figures. The resolution comes when we decide that we're going to do whatever it takes to become the person that can make six figures. One of the, one of the most famous quotes by Wayne Dyer is, you don't chase becoming a millionaire. You don't pursue becoming a millionaire to make a million dollars. 
You pursue becoming a millionaire to become the person that can make a million dollars. And this brings it to really the ethos or the philosophy of everything we've built at Rebuilt Recovery, which is our coaching company where we help men overcome pornography addiction. I believe the path to overcoming your addiction to pornography is to become the man that is no longer addicted to porn. And it's in that word becoming that we must identify what does living a porn-free life look like? What daily habits, what values, what principles does a porn-free man live by? And then we chase becoming that man as the goal. And then the byproduct of us becoming that man is we've accomplished our goal of living and overcoming our pornography addiction. So I think most people fail. Most people don't succeed in accomplishing their New Year's goals and accomplishing their New Year's resolutions because they're focused on the goal, the target versus becoming the person that can accomplish those goals and targets. But what does this mean? Let's break this down into maybe some actual tangible targets. Let's say we had a goal this year to lose 20 pounds, okay? Not a massive weight loss. Many of us out there could probably benefit from dropping 20 pounds off of our physique. I think it would improve your energy, would improve your sleep, would improve your performance in every single area of your life. But if we had that as the target, we don't make the resolutions to lose 20 pounds. We make the resolution to become the person that is 20 pounds lighter than we are today. And what does that look like for us? What does it mean to become a person that is 20 pounds lighter than where we are today? Well, let's start with what time does that individual wake up? If you were 20 pounds lighter, what time in the morning would you wake up? What would be the first thing you did? What would your morning routine look like? Do you eat breakfast or do you practice intermittent fasting? If you're gonna lose 20 pounds, you're gonna be 20 pounds lighter than you are today, chances are you have a different training regimen, different training program than the one you're currently doing right now. So if you defined that, what does that program look like? Did you need to hire a coach to help you get there? Or are you going to go out and do this on your own? Okay. And then once you move on throughout the day, it's getting clear on this individual that's 20 pounds lighter. What does he do every single day? What does his day look like? What time does he eat lunch? What does his lunch even include? Is it a ketogenic diet that you're following? Are you counting your macros? Are you tracking food? Or once again, are you intermittent fasting? Okay, what does this man do for his relationships? So it's identifying that if I'm going to become this person, I need to get clear on the life that he's living. Then my, then my target is to begin to live that life. Now it's gonna be hard to live a life of somebody that's 20 pounds lighter if you're still carrying the 20 pounds around, but you can begin to have the wake up time of somebody that's 20 pounds lighter, right? You can begin to eat the breakfast of somebody that's 20 pounds lighter. You could begin to follow the training plan of somebody that's 20 pounds lighter. And if you set your aim and target correctly and got clear on actually this is what he's going to do, you do that long enough, the byproduct of you doing that long enough is going to be you are 20 pounds lighter, okay? Let's take another example. Maybe you have a goal to make a million dollars this year. Big, audacious, hairy goal, right? It's like something we've never accomplished before is we wanna make a million dollars. Well, we know to make a million dollars, you have to make roughly $2,800 every single day, okay? Well, how do you go about doing that, okay? What does it take for somebody to make $2,800 every single day? Are you selling a product or service? How much does your product or service sell for? So if you know that you, you need to make $2,800 and you sell a $1,500 product, then essentially you have to sell two products every single day. Well, if you know that, what does it take to sell two products every single day? How many people do you need to be in front of? How many sales calls do you need to take? How many outreaches do you need to do? And then what you begin to do is you begin to chase those targets. And in the business world, this is known as KPIs or key performance indicators. This is something we help our business clients focus on is identifying what the key metrics are, the key daily metrics that we need to hit every single day to produce the outcome that we're looking for. But I don't think people fail at hitting their goals and hitting their targets because they don't know what to do. Oftentimes that could be the case, but here's the thing, right, is information is abundantly out there. There's more information than we could ever consume. So I do believe you know what it needs to take, but I think too many of us are focused on the wrong thing. Focus on who you need to become. Focus on the daily habits. Focus on the actions. Focus on the values and principles at which you need to live your life by in order to become the person that you wanna be produce the outcome in your life that you want to produce. Now, here's the thing. Once again, if you do that long enough and you don't produce the outcome, now we got to come back and say, okay, did we actually set our aim on becoming this person correctly? Chances are, if you haven't produced the outcome yet, then you haven't, you haven't identified clearly 
who you need to be. But chances are, if you do this successfully and you begin to live this way out, you will get closer to the goal and you can make assessments and you can make uh, the necessary changes in your approach and in your plan. But it comes back to guys, once again, are you focused on who you need to become in order to hit your goals or are you chasing goals without any structure and any plan? Yes, we know we need help. We know we need community. We know we need coaching. We know we need support. We know we need a plan. We know we need accountability. We need all these pillars and these are not new information. But I think if you could shift your perspective, if you could shift your approach from focusing purely on the goal and the outcome instead of who it is you're becoming, make that your focus. Make that the emphasis. Make that the target of living that life out every single day. And what you'll quickly realize is hitting your goals, hitting your targets is a whole lot easier and a whole lot more enjoyable because now you're focused on the process, right? This is where a lot of people say focus on the process goals as opposed to the outcome goals. This is a big underlying theme in James Clear book, Atomic Habits, which I highly recommend everybody read. But if you focus on what you need to do every single day and who you need to become, the byproduct of that will be you hit those targets and you hit those outcomes that you're chasing. Now, if you guys are looking for some help in doing this, guys, we have two ways that we can help you this year. Obviously, for the men that are struggling with pornography, we have our Reboot Your Life four-month coaching program. We launch one cohort every single month where we take a deep dive into recovery, into living a porn-free life. We take a group of men. So if you're interested in that, guys, there's a link down there in the description box below. But we want to help you find the freedom in your life. Now, if you've already overcome your struggles with pornography and you know that this is the year you're ready to make significant changes in your life, guys, we have our Becoming Superhuman Mastermind. Guys, this is where we spend a year together giving you the tools, giving you the leadership development curriculum to unlock the 11 superhuman virtues so you can step into the life that God has created you to live. So we're going to put a link down there into the application for that as well, guys. But I'm excited about what 23, 2023 is going to bring for us here at the Superman Life. I'm excited about what it's going to bring for you. And I wanted to give you guys a quick insight into why I believe so many resolutions fail. I don't believe it fails because we don't know what to do. I think it fails because we're focused on the wrong things. So stop chasing your goals and begin to chase becoming the person that can accomplish your goals. And that is the recipe to being in that 9% that succeeds. Guys, hope this was helpful. We're excited. Uh, this Thursday, we'll be dropping our first interview of the year. We have an incredible guest. We're bringing on guys. And like I said, we're doubling down on the interviews here. So if you're getting value out of this, guys, thank you once again. Go leave a five-star rating right there on Apple or Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to. But we appreciate you guys. We're looking forward to 2023. Future looks bright for all of us guys. God bless you. And we'll see you on the other side.